not yet. Now we are live. Oh, great. So another Facebook Live for the Generosity Project. And I'm really glad to have today with me Christos Nikas. Hello, Tolis. Hello. Even though I don't know you so many years, it's about 14, 15 months, I feel you as a friend. And that's because you um, have a very special personality. And I'm so handsome, of course. Yeah, that's <laughs> also, that's also a reason. Uh, but you are taken, so that's out of the discussion today, for today at least. For today at least. <laughs> yes. So my my regards uh, to I'm Maria. Gonna, I'm gonna make a short uh, introduction. Why I have you today here on a Facebook Live? That's okay. called uh, Generosity Project, and I why I think you're a master of uh, generosity. So this is going to be the first awkward moment of the night. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. You can tell me later how you feel about people praising you. So uh, I'm really surprised having in, uh, in Greece a person who creates communities like you where there is no. In the middle of the crisis, when everybody's looking on his own thing and actually looking, copying others or taking business from others, uh, trying to connect people so they can level up all together. An industry that is that before you showed up was not connected at all. There was yep. no start, no middle, no end. And you said, hey, guys, let's get together, which is the wedding industry, wedding DJ industry in Greece. And it's not that just that you connected them. You're pushing them really hard and you're leading away and you're telling them not what to do, but you're opening discussions. You get vulnerable in the group. A group. few minutes ago, you made an announcement, a question to your group about something that uh, you want to start a discussion about things that you think about, about the previous conferences you attended, and you share everything you have in your he head with those people who actually are co your competitors. And that's really, really grateful to see from my side that this is happening. And uh, I think those people who are in this group should be grateful at all also to have a person like you connected them and that's really rare out there especially in greece since we both have read uh today's post uh, by seth uh, mm -hmm. it's not like i'm sharing a pizza yeah so yeah uh, i don't know if it's rare or not uh i'm not trying to do something rare or something unique just what i think it's good and uh, beneficial for all of us. And when you believe that by giving, you're getting more, I could say that I'm not a generous person, but I'm a selfish person because I want to give to get more. That's actually true. And I, I believe this as well. But uh, since you also know that we are all one, by sharing, it's not that you get it on your own. We get all out of it. Yeah. So, but the, the Greek culture is not uh, famous to have this posture of generosity, especially in the last 10 years. Yeah. Especially. Before as well. Uh, I was grown up in uh, outside of Greece, in Germany, and even their Greeks couldn't work together. There was a saying, uh, it was like this in English, if there is a successful Greek abroad, send them another Greek. <laughs> So he destroys this Greek. <laughs> we are not uh, good in cooperating together. But uh, that's why I say you stand out, because uh, you bring a different posture in that community. And you push people to start rethinking. And you start challenging those status quo and uh, changing, actually, 
And this will also be your talk, right, in your conference about mindset. Yeah, but uh, how how do we face our clients? It's going to be about uh, pricing, about empathy, about yeah. how to deal with those questions, about how to see your client not as uh, money but as a person, and trying uh, to uh make him trust you to create uh, a high trust high care high value relationship rather than uh, how much money do you have to give me and uh, let me see what i can do for you so yeah it's a mindset but uh it's not uh, directly related to generosity funny thing is that no matter what you give you cannot force anyone to take mm -hmm. So the real congratulations are for those who are decide to take what is given mm -hmm. and not to give it himself because they are making a choice to receive. Sometimes to uh, put their ego right under the real action of taking and say, thank you, I will accept this help, I will accept this piece of information, I will accept anything. Because sometimes uh, it's it's really challenging to to accept help. Not just help, to accept to read something, to accept that somebody knows something more than you, to accept that uh, you haven't reached your limits yet, uh, to accept that you have uh, more miles to travel ahead. Uh, so, yeah, the real bravo, the real congratulations are for those who are choosing to, to get things. That's, that's, yeah, I agree with you absolutely because there's also this Greek pride that's standing in our way that we don't accept help. And this is actually one of the greatest gifts we can uh, give to someone else to receiving, to accept someone else to helping us, especially in family, with friends and in communities. And uh, people uh, accepting others for their word and saying, yes, lead me or show me, this is, this is really huge. So it's both ends. It's not only the giver, so also the receiver. And uh, who taught Yeah, tell me. Uh, I was just gonna add that it's like, you know, a riddle. Uh, like uh, the quota did make the egg, the egg or the ch or the egg the chicken, uh, yeah. and the question, <laughs> yeah, the quota, yeah, the chicken. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you insisted on doing it in English, so okay, I'm gonna be the cheapest of the talk here. Uh, <laughs> so the real question is: Are there gonna be teachers if we have enough students asking for teachers, or? If we have teachers, then we have students. So who comes first? I think that if you have pe enough people that want to take, the givers will rise up and they will give. Sometimes the givers are staying in the shadows because uh, they think that nobody wants to receive. So they are not making the step. But if, if more, they're more people say that, okay, I want to take, I want to be part of something, I want to I wanna learn, I want to uh, understand, I, I want to be helped. Not in the way, you know, that I'm weak. More of a sense that I'm incomplete or maybe there are more for me to know, to gain, I don't know. Uh, but I think that if more, of this category of people uh, show up, then the givers will show up as well. That's right. There are, of course, exceptions, people that give without needing anyone and say, okay, I'm a giver. If there is someone that wants to take, please come. But those are few bright exceptions. Who gave you the right to stand up and say, hey, folks, follow me, or let's do this, or let's come together. Who gave you the opportunity and the authority 
to speak up and say, hey, this is the way we should go from now on? I don't see it as, a, as an authority. It's more like maybe a responsibility, but not even that. Mm -hmm. I was following the example when I started my DJ career and uh, as a person who, who liked technology, who was on YouTube all the time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my day was full of other professionals sharing things online, helping people without even know if somebody is watching. And they were giving information and they were giving everything and advice and uh, with such a warm tone. And when I, when I was reaching them on Facebook, they were like thanking me for saying hi and, and showing appreciation, even though they had 200 videos on YouTube uh, sharing stuff and helping me grow as a professional. So when your first steps as professional are inspired by this kind of generosity, you have no other way, a one-way street actually, to pass it to your community and share things and say, guys, I've learned this. If I was, you know, discovering everything myself, then maybe my posture would be different. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it, my precious. Uh, but I didn't invent it, everything. I didn't invent anything. Everything was given to me. And I, I have proofs. I mean, I know for sure but the more I give, the more I learn. And it's proven that, I mean, if you want to, to understand the book completely, you have to describe it to somebody else. Because by, by telling what you've learned, you make some connections from, you know, your understanding brain centers to your, to your language and to, you know, to, to your tongue. And when you speak out what you've learned, you understand it better. So by sharing information by sharing articles i've read by sharing blog posts by sharing books by sharing anything i find myself understanding better my market my business my clients and uh so so it's not a right or, or, or an authority it was like you know who gave uh, i don't know uh marco polo uh, or uh, uh any other great adventurer or uh, to go travel and find new places. It, it wasn't a right, it wasn't a privilege, it wasn't an authority. Maybe you, you, will, you will become an authority afterwards, but till then you're just a crazy person trying to do something crazy, equally crazy. Maybe now I'm the administrator of this group, but when it started out, oh, just to uh, give uh, your audience the right context, on 2013, I've created the first Facebook group, the first community on Facebook for Greek wedding DJs, gathering a, a big company, big, uh, uh, more than 100 DJs, and sitting them down literally and starting talking to each other because they hadn't talked to each other. And this group uh, grew up to become the wedding DJ convention uh, five years later, five years later. And the convention was not an idea that, okay, I have decided to make a convention, let's start sending invitations. It was actually this group that made, made a decision uh, that this fake Facebook entity could become something real, something mm -hmm. you can touch, something you can feel, something you can smell, something you can be proud of, be part of. So yeah, there is no authority here. There is just a responsibility. Of course, as an administrator, administrator you have rights, uh, but uh, it's not about rights, it's about the responsibility. I don't know. But um, on this process, on that journey from 2013 until now, you made also a lot of mistakes. I mean, there was new 
uh, unexplored ground, unexplored waters. There is no textbook you can read how to lead a community and how to be democratic and open conversations. So you made, I'm sure you made a lot of mistakes. This is how it works. I've and learned a lot of lessons. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. But the first thing when you, what, what pops up in your mind in the first moment when you realize that mm, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have kicked him out of the group or whatever that might be, that you, because you have the responsibility, that you self-reflected you and said, mm, this maybe was too harsh or unfair. How do you talk to yourself? To come next day, show up again and say, hey, guys, let's continue. Let's keep going. Who pushes you, actually? Is it your wife? Is it now your, your uh, daughter? My wife What's and daughter pushes me a lot, but not uh, at this direction. Of course, they're, yeah. they're an inspiration for me. Uh, this urge, this push is coming from inside. I cannot. I, I haven't, you know, spotted it uh, precisely, but I think that I don't have a choice. They're my friends, they're my colleagues, they're my brothers in arms. Uh, there is no choice not doing this. Maybe someday it will uh, reform, it will change form, but uh, I will always be there for anybody who wants to uh, be there with me as well. It's not like there is a choice. Yes, you have to take responsibility of your faults, of course, of your mistakes. Uh, if you have done someone wrong, you have to fix this. Uh, you have to be responsible for the greater good of the, of the community. Yeah, administrators act like, I don't know, like basically the form is monarchy because <laughs> there, there is just one administrator <laughs> yeah. there is no voting inside groups uh but those are the rules of the game i don't know maybe facebook would have a, a better idea and start democratic groups with uh, <laughs> with parliaments and uh, and government and i don't know what <laughs> but uh, you're, you're a good listener you also listen to the community. You try to listen behind the lines. We made uh, we made a lot of conversations, trying to have a, a more accurate interpretation what everybody means and where everybody comes from. Because it's not that uh, uh, what unites your community. It's not that there are DJs, because there are many more DJs out there. Oh, something else that unites you. It's a vision. It's something that this uh, belonging, this we are, as you said, a brotherhood. I don't know. There are also some sisters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only yeah. man. Since you like Greek stereotypes, uh, and yeah, you know, you were telling me about the Greeks in uh, uh, generosity and the Greeks abroad. Yeah, there are, uh, I think there are about nine million more DJs. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, those one hundred are are the chosen ones. Uh, but uh, let me get back to the monarchy mm -hmm. and the democratic part. The Facebook group is like a group of friends. Only they're meeting online. So if uh, you have uh, a bunch of friends, and uh, you you decide that one of them is no longer a good fit for the company, you will cut him out, of course. You have a person that is not, you know, you're not a good fit. Okay. This is not required democratic procedures. You say, I don't want you to be my friend. And you are stop communicating with this guy because you are at a completely different state of mind level or anything. Mm -hmm. Same with the community on Facebook. If somebody is not belonging to the community because he's, uh, he don't want to be there, he, uh, he stands for something completely different, 
he will get yeah. his road and it's not like you're banning somebody it's yeah. not like you're you're taking from him rights or anything he's not part of the group anymore yeah i understand that it's like a living organism i mean there's something that the whole community gets rid of because it doesn't yeah. fit there anymore because he yeah sometimes anyway it's a completely different yeah conversation uh please go on yeah, yeah. Keep, so, me, um, keep feeling me awkward okay yeah. you so, now i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to you it's not only that you're a very good role model that you show us how to lead a community which is a close community right it's not everybody knows everybody it's not that you're eight million there and it's like uh, uh unpersonal uh, and, we, uh, we still need work i'm trying my yeah. best i'm trying to find my solutions on that i will figure that out but yeah but you're not uh, only this you're much much bigger than that you are blogging you are playing music you are leading a company an actual company an organization with which makes profit which is a business you're constant constantly leveling up um innovating the way you see the business trying a lot of new things i mean now that i met you a few days ago at uh, another uh conference you came with fresh ideas i don't know if you're ever stopped thinking in the innovation direction you constantly come up with new ideas what could work what might work okay some of those ideas are shitty ideas but it's okay and i don't know i mean do you ever 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 calm down and say now i'm taking a break you know what i'm just letting it go just watching a movie or even if you watch a movie maybe you take some pieces out of it and you deconstruct it and see how you can make it work on your business M movies are great inspiration you, are <laughs> you, know. you know how to connect the dots movies and tv series are great inspiration uh no uh, uh, ideas and uh you know thinking about stuff it's all about connecting dots mm -hmm. so if you like to connect the dots there is no taking a break from it on the contrary when you're taking a break and when you are feeling relaxed those are the moments when the best ideas come up i'm trying to sleep yeah and when i'm relaxed i have this uh, brilliant idea about a blog <laughs> and when when i'm working I have, uh, i'm having the you know the the, the less ideas this is because i'm working on the ones i have but when i'm on vacation when i'm calling my daughter when i'm running when i'm eating uh, when i am in the bathroom ideas keep popping up and uh the person that really goes crazy about this and you know I'm, I'm driving her crazy. It's my wife. Well, are you ever gonna stop creating ideas? And when, when I've met her, uh, we got married on uh, uh, late uh, 2013. I had on, already started the group, and she was asking if you keep telling them everything, <laughs> what will it stay for you? And I would say. Don't worry, we'll find something. <laughs> something will come up. And yeah. eight years later, I'm still trying, you know, to okay, everybody now is doing this. What is the best, the best opportunity to start doing something else? And so I'm evolving and I'm sharing the next thing. And uh, I see that it spreads and everybody starts doing that. And I say, what a great opportunity to look for something else and i'm jumping you know like a frog <laughs> from here to here and there always focused of course on, on providing great service and helping people and blah 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 uh, but this is what most people miss they're trying to copy 
other people's what and how and not their why. Because if you if you copy if you copy wise, then you will find your own ways to do things. If you keep copying what's and how's, you are missing the big picture and you're just copying execution process. And you will never find your own way. Because you're always copying what he's doing and not why he's doing this. Because you will see that maybe his what is not a great fit for you. It's not a great fit for your market. It does not work well for you. Uh, so yeah, I'm keeping my why, I'm traveling, I'm exploring uh, things, I make mistakes. Uh, and uh, I'm trying, I'm trying my best to help other especially DJs grow they have their struggles you know they're struggling they have their problems they have whatever they may have I want them to stay inspired but in a practical way not you know just dreaming okay Christos doing that or this DJ in America in the US is doing this and yes, I can do this someday, and I want, and I want, you know, the conversation we had the other day. But say, like, okay, I'm feeling safe. There are other people that have tried this and worked. So now I'm feeling safe to do the same or modify it and do it uh, for me. Uh, because they, 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 they took the risk. And now I can follow uh, safely. Yeah, that's wise words. And also, here's a uh, wise quote from Mike Vekris, one of the one of, among the great community uh, you have. Uh, he says, David Goggins once said, I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. Therefore, I don't know if there is such a thing as a break for a guy like this. A yes, guy like Mike. this is you. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Mike. Um, uh, you said it already about the one thing and the decision part, but we will not discuss about this here because here mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, talk about you and um, the thing you said about the why and the what and the how. You had a, a post lately about the why and this is also what I think why um, we, we stuck at the, at the very first, when you introduced yourself to me digitally, and um, we kept fighting through this year about a lot of things. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. But we keep on talking because what resonates is actually the why. You're doing your thing, your way, I'm doing my thing, my way. But what resonates with other people, this is also what I see, it's what comes from your heart, and this is your why. You can do it however you want, and that's why you have a very strong drive in doing new things. And that's also what impresses me, that you learn a new skill, and you instantly are implementing it in your daily. I mean, this year you started doing vlogging, and not just vlogging, taking your mobile phone and shooting a few uh, takes, you bought a camera, a tripod, a microphone. You, I don't know, uh, you told me that there's huge work behind that. Then you started editing those footage on your own, uploading them on YouTube. I mean, for guys who don't know, a season for a wedding professional in Greece from May to September, it's, I don't know how many weddings you, you participated this year. And at the same time, vlogging, shooting, editing, whoa. See, Christina Dukuziani also says she has uh, Make Video Greece, one of your teachers in terms of YouTubing. Oh yeah, I'm inspiring. I mean, what what comes next after vlogging? Next season. <laughs> What's the next level for Christos Nikas? 
and Wedding Republic? There are two main secrets of success. Mm -hmm. The first rule, two, two rules, is never reveal all your secrets. And the second rule, go on. You tell me. Oh no, uh, then you get the joke. The first rule is never reveal all your secrets. And the second rule, okay, we're moving on. <laughs> okay. But be sure that the moment I decide to do something new, I'm going to try to teach it. I'm going to try to inspire other people to do it. Uh, and I'm Keyword, gonna... the moment you decide it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, conversation. like yeah. you did on Friday, the moment you decided you don't want it, you decided it to vlog. That's why you invited Christina to make a master class. So you can teach, get taught, get the skills and start. I mean, when, when you when something is in your mind, you just execute on that. You find a way to find the equipment, the skills, the knowledge to start doing it. And Maria is asking. You cannot deny it. I know you. Even one year, I know too well. So if something is in your mind, you will find a way to do it. In the big picture, what is playing music for you? What is the real purpose? Okay, let me start. Hello, Maria. Take the... And she told me she needs it. Uh, slap him one or twice. Okay, so just let me be clear. Uh, I quit being a DJ last year, I mean, or, or two years ago, after 20 years of playing music. More than 20 years. I'm playing in weddings uh, in 20 years, since 1996. I'm playing music since 1987. So I quit being a DJ, a DJ because I had to focus on managing my firm, managing the convention, managing some other uh, stuff, and find time uh, to spend with my family and uh, to do things I love. Uh, it's not like I don't love playing music, but uh, uh, if you know when you need to do other stuff, you must evolve. And uh, one man cannot do anything. It's, it's, it's really selfish to think that he can do everything by himself. So priorities are very, very important uh, in business and in life. Uh, but I can tell you, Maria, what uh playing music was all about before so my first uh, uh, uh you know uh, relationship with music was radio back in the days uh and uh it all came from an uh from a need i have i had inside to share uh songs that i enjoyed hearing with other people so it was now that I'm thinking about it, it was, yes, another sharing uh, moment. So when I heard, when I was hearing a good song, I was saying to myself, okay, this is not something I have to keep for myself. I have to share it with somebody else. And I start uh, doing some radio. But the thing it was missing from radio is that I couldn't see the reactions of uh, my audience and i have learned about you know that you can be a dj okay it was the late 80s it was uh keep in mind that uh cd was introduced back in 1984 as a medium as a format and so uh at one of my travels uh, in europe i bought two cd players uh from germany or from belgium i don't remember and some cds and i became a, a cd dj starting to play music at some small coffee shops you know in uh, uh, restaurants and bars here and there of course all my school parties and all my, uh, my college parties and uh from the from day one it was all about not keeping a pleasure for myself but sharing this pleasure uh, such as music with others and then i was introduced to the uh, wedding world and to the private event world where uh, 
I serve uh, till today from different uh, roles. But yeah, playing music is sharing something like uh, sharing emotions that this music brings to you, sharing them with other people. Yeah, that's that's what uh, being generous looks like, that you want to share this, don't keep it on your own. And this is a moment where it's interesting also for Maria and me, especially for Maria, because she is doing her craft like you did your art and playing music. She has her thing and having mastered her cutting, and now she makes the next step of yeah. teaching it. Yeah. Of the inside yeah. of the head. Yeah, the inside, but also teaching others to doing her. I mean, how? when was your moment when you said, okay, I have to stop playing in order to focus on something else so I can grow, leaving this behind, which brought you here. I mean, how was this decision and what uh, was going on inside you to take this decision? This decision came very naturally. When you're doing something that requires uh, to stay relevant, I mean, when I started playing music at weddings, almost every couple ahead was older than me. And they were asking me, do you know how to play the 70s music and the 80s music? And I said, of course, I'm a DJ. Now, 90% of my couples are... Uh, Millennials or the generation Y or I don't know what, and, and, and I'm not relevant. I cannot understand them. I cannot understand the way they're having fun. I cannot really relate to them. I mean, if I study, of course, I will be able to understand my profession, but I cannot relate to them. This is why my team now, our DJ, very talented DJ, starting from the age of 22, 23, but they're living this pulse. They're living this way of having fun. They're, they're, they're no what couples think they can relate to them and couples can relate to the dj because they're they're having the same guy you know one of a kind they are one of a kind they're mm. going to the same nightclubs they're listening to the same artists they they understand music in a different way that we did i don't know what the fuck trap or twerk is <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would but like they, to see you on your convention doing that yeah, but, but they, they know. So I serve my couples better by providing them talent and experience by someone who can relate them to. Also, uh, you cannot spend uh, your life uh, staying awake all night, seven nights a week. I want to enjoy a TV series or a nice movie with my wife, with my daughter. And I saw DJing as uh, or this uh, event entertainment as a business, and as a businessman, I saw it as a business and, and not as a performer for life. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I discovered that I, I find fulfillment in teaching things in uh, serving others in a different way, in helping people. Uh, this is something I took from my mother, uh, who, who was an educator. I've teached graphic design because my background includes uh, graphic design diplomas, uh, bachelor and masters, uh, past, uh, plus uh, postgraduate uh, uh, studies, but anyway. So I've teach graphic design. I was always find pleasure in teaching, in passing information, and uh, you know interacting with uh, people that uh, wanted to learn. Uh, and now I want to do things for myself. I want to complete my book. Uh, you know, we were talking about it uh, last Easter, I think. I've never made time to do this. Maybe this is my time. This is my year. Uh, and to follow some other dreams and experiment with with things and areas uh, just to stay fresh. I don't know. I like this. 
you know, I like yes. jumping from from here to there. It's not like you are. You are this is the entrepreneurship mind. Yeah. It's not like you're gonna stay there and take your uh, I don't know translate syntax for me pension. Pension, yes. This, yeah. this is what I wanted to mention right now. That uh, most people would say in many uh, jobs that you choose when you're young, how long can you do that? And I mean, you evolve. I mean, I think you're a guy like I am that we will ne never stop working. I mean, th this concept of reaching the age of 60, 65, and then you get in pension doesn't work for us. Of course not. <laughs> Of course not. It's not. It's out of the question, Tolis. Yes. Because for yeah. us, it's not. It's not work. Work. It's creation. So it's not like we're obliged to do something to go there from nine to five and do something for somebody else and feeling, you know, compressed and depressed and feeling disappointed and feeling. It's like you know we we, we are creative all the time. We're travelers. Uh, we're creators. We are uh, wanderers. I don't know. We're pioneers. Uh, we are failures, but uh, even so, these are all failures. You know, somebody yeah. else taking the blame for them. Yeah. And uh, maybe we're, we're going to become poets, I don't know, or painters, or, uh, yeah. or, or sculptures. Right? Yeah. The thing is that uh, even at the age, what help us to reach this age of 90, 95, 120, I don't know. <laughs> We are still going to be, you know, thinking how to do things, how to help people, how to, uh, you know, this yeah. is a curse, but it's a good curse. I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it as well. I mean, uh, I was also in my 30s and I was thinking of my 40s that I wanted to step out of the computer, not doing, pro producing things on the, sitting on the computer. And you oh, have yeah. to evolve. We have you to evolve. You have to grow also yourself and learn new things and step outside your comfort zone like your good friend christos used to say and that's what you're doing i mean you're now 33 and i guess when you're 40 you will also be are you, wiser are you talking yeah, to me I'm, I'm talking to you yes <laughs> i'm what i'm 33 yeah 32 34. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, this may be the haircut. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost 45. But since when the world is constantly changing, why should we stay stable? Everything, I mean, just imagine this 10 years ago, most of the applications on our, uh, on our phone were not even existed yet. Yeah. I mean, YouTube, 2007, 2008, 2007, I think, Facebook, that time. So 12 years ago, none of this existed. And we've seen so many changes in the last 10 years. So what? why should we stay on one place doing the exact same thing? They're, you know, committed to something. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's the Greek culture, the Greek mindset. They want to go back to the 80s. So maybe we have the opportunity again to be DJs from the beginning because they want to have pass up times of 80s again. So yeah, the I would, yes, yeah. I would be glad to be DJing next to you with uh, MCs and with LPs <laughs> if we go back to the 80s. But I think so, all this yeah. Even even if we are creators, for some people, it works the other way. It suits them. It's good for them. It's I mean, there is not just one way for everybody. Yeah. Maybe for some people it's good to stay there at a company or a, at a bank or anything and stay there. And evolve, make make their their fight, their, you know, give their fights there. Uh, freelancing uh, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Not everybody is meant to be a soldier or a general 
or uh, a captain, or anything. This is why we have so many uh, roles to play at a game, at a world, at a company. It's not like a, a, every position is for everyone. Yeah. So we have here another. Maria is saying, taking away the pressure of getting a pension in the age of 90, maybe we'll make a group of creators and continue to do whatever we love. Maybe we buy an island and go there and continue creating all together. So to wrap this up at the end, I want a statement from you and a message to everybody out there who ha doesn't have the bravery and the guts to do whatever he always desired to do. And he's looking up at you. Maybe he's now 22, 23, 24. Maybe he's a DJ that you hired. Or maybe he's even older. He's 35. And he sees that maybe he missed the point of leveling up. And uh, what do you have to say to those guys? That they have strong desires following their heart. And they're always reaching out and trying to see what other guys are doing so maybe they don't fall behind too much be in the masses but never ever had the guts to stand out it's kind of a cliche but it's something uh i believe in better done than perfect mm. So when you have a dream, or you have a purpose, or you have a goal, you will never be ready to make the jump. It's much better to make the jump and evolve doing this rather than waiting. Because the more you wait, the more you will see other people grow, and you will still be uh inadequate comparing to them and you will and you will keep trying to be perfect and this moment will never come so if you want to start something uh make a basic preparation i don't know don't go blindly uh, and get killed but start now and find your way through the process, evolve uh, later on. How do you start now? Uh, you are taking me where you want. Okay, by saying I'm deciding to start, I mean, totally, okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, everybody in Greece have made a, a cliff jump, uh, you know, in the water. I don't know how tall this rock was, one meter, three meter, five meter, 11 meter, I don't know, but, you know, this is the moment when you are standing, you know, at the edge of the cliff and say, uh, I can jump, I want to jump. Uh, uh, all my friends did it, blah, 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 blah. And there is this one moment when you say, not um, I will do it, you say, I'm doing it. And you jump. Even if this is just, you know, a microsecond, just a split of a second, the difference is huge because one moment you were there and the right next moment you have jumped, you're in the air. So it might be just one microsecond before, but the difference is, is huge. So yeah, it's not even about I have decided or I'm deciding do it the right mindset is i am doing it now i mean you have already jumped i'm doing it yeah because so you the, mo the, the moment you think about it you have already executed on your idea yeah you can stay up there as as long as you want you haven't jumped yet okay stay there and think you know your own shit i don't know deal with it but the moment you say, I'm doing it, you're off. Yeah, that's true. And I think that you're a guy that 
whoever listens to that and is in, on uh, standing on that cliff, even he, if he's not a DJ, maybe he's, uh, I don't know, whatever he could be. He wants to quit his job or he wants to move to another city or whatever. Reaching out to a guy like you so you can be his mentor. I I am now without having your commitment. I think you would be great in doing that, and you would welcome it with open arms. A guy leading him through this process and helping. So everybody out there who has to have take these decisions, you are not alone. You are not alone. Reach out to guys who have done it, like Christos, and there are many, many uh, guys out there. Reach out to them. Ask them for help. And we keep doing this because jumping yeah. over cliffs, it's something we are doing. Uh, it's addictive. Almost, yeah, almost every day. But uh, since you've mentioned the word mentor, nobody can claim that he's the mentor. He's a mentor. Because mentor is not like something you are stating of, uh, you know, of being. It's something you are becoming from for someone after yeah. you've done the job. And only he can declare you as his mentor. You, yeah. you cannot declare yourself as a mentor. That's true. A mentor is somebody somebody is becoming a mentor for someone specifically or for uh, some people. But only if they recognize him as a mentor. You, you cannot self-declare yourself as a mentor. Of course, yeah. because you are someone to who? Yeah, someone has to come uh, and walk a similar path like you did, so you can inspire them and teach them yeah. your lessons and feel you as a mentor, not even declare yeah. you. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's true. So that's why I'm saying, if someone has to um, take and make those next steps, and he feels inspired by you, what you have done until now. I say now, feel free to reach out to this guy. He would love to mentor you because he's a good mentor. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for being here with us to share uh, that you shared your wisdom, your thank journey. You for being patient with my English. Uh, I hope uh, everything I said made sense. And it wasn't like you know jibber jabbish just, uh, <laughs> this is why you can uh, uh, see it again and again trying to understand what this crazy guy is uh, saying uh okay this this wasn't as hard as i was expecting okay you were kind like it was kind of, you were kind enough uh so yes we uh we will continue uh, being friends I'm still talking to you uh, I'm glad. tomorrow. Yeah, Tuesday the 13th. Yeah, that was a hard uh, date. Uh, this is a great project. Uh, I can't wait to watch and listen to other uh, your other guests, very talented ones, are very inspiring people. And of course, I can't wait for December to come. Uh, with this great appearance of uh, your teacher and mentor. Yeah. I think he's a mentor for yeah. so many. He, he's a teacher, and mostly. Um, many people would like to step in his, uh, what he's doing, but they can't. Nobody can. He's so unique. Like you are, like everybody is. He had, uh, uh, let's say the luck to figure it out pretty soon and yeah. executing but, uh, on his but, ideas. But he's trying to make everybody be like him. Uh, no, in the way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. the way of thinking, because his uh, way of thinking, his methodologies uh, can help you gain clarity really, really fast. And then figuring out who you really are and using this as a basis to step on that and tomorrow we will have katie pasternak she's great she's really inspiring for me even though she's only 
leading and coaching women. Uh, her content and uh, her voice is inspiring me a lot. Maybe my feminine, feminine side, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The feminine side is strong with you, my son. Yes. My young, uh, yeah. Part of one. Part of one, yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, as Weddings Republic quote says, may the fun be with you. And since we're quoting from Star Wars, yeah. may the fun be with you. Thank you, Tolis, again for uh, including me to Generosity Project. I really appreciate it. It's a great project. Uh, it was an honor. Hope uh, what we said made sense for uh, somebody out there. If not, it's not for them, and it's okay. <laughs> maybe it will become something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's okay. So thank you, everybody being here in the comments. Let's close with the comment of Christos Consaludis. He said, it's huge to mentor, to mentor and to be mentored as well. Yeah, Christos.